and here we go hey this is flash at 20 percent off on the real liberty media.com tonight on uh, the 25th of july in 2019 yes 2019 we made it i guess we uh got another <laughs> another selection coming for for the public to be entertained with the politics and uh, they're doing kind of a nice job with this Iran crisis. Ooh, Iran crisis. Anyway, want to say thanks to Grimner for uh, doing all the damn technical stuff he does for us all. You know, not just me. Me and Benny do this together. I do it with Mary. So I I usually have a ho- well. I often have a hostage. Not not every show. And tonight, I don't have anything prepared, so we're going to do a, probably going to do a one hour, 20% off, off the cuff, and uh, there's not a lot really going on in life that, you know, it's not, it's all reruns, we've done it all before, we've seen it all before, heard it all before, read the chat on the internet, and pretty much, uh, hmm, things are just unpleasant, I think, in society right now. And I'm not talking just the just the one I'm from. I mean all of them, because uh, Denmark got sucked into this fucking stupid shit with Iran too. And they're gonna be on the money side. Guess who that is? They're not gonna stand with Iran against America. They should. I think they should, but I don't think they will because, well, you know, look at all the horrible, horrible things that Iran's done. To the world <laughs> since, since it started <laughs> it's been around a while if you didn't know iran hey moose iran used to be persia just in case you guys didn't know you know if you ever listen to queen you know that band rock and roll band some people that listen to this show would probably know this stuff freddie mercury was from persia so he was an iranian <laughs> probably be glad he's dead because to see this crap this political shit we do to each other is, it's ridiculous anyway gonna say hello to the bots and the bodies of the real liberty media.com chat you know where all the greatest thinking minds of the 20th century gather to try to figure out where it all went wrong <laughs> And tonight we've got uh, we've got Barman and Grimnir, Moose Girl and DC brackets. We've got Anti and Ezvo, Chalcedoni, Graham Z, Ivy Don C, Java Doctor Two, Meister Brow, Miss Kate, Rob Works, Rooms, Vanna White, Vinny, Weather Dork, Phantom, Cyborg Noodle, and Siv Me. Frumpt, Gooberzilla, Gromit, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Ponder Gander, Hello, Vinny, Prince, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, Smod Ass, and Van Meter. That's the lineup for the uh, typers in the group. We got a few people. They post links, chat, do this and that. And we got a couple of folks that, like myself, sometimes I'm just logged on and reading. Don't have anything to input, just checking out what's going on on the site. But tonight is my epic 20% off where <laughs> Grim gives me the opportunity, on RLM so to speak, to voice my opposition to the way things seem. You know, because, wow, the way they are and the way they seem, that might not be the same exact thing. Um, I've noticed other people on the chat world are also noticing, in their opinion anyway, that, you know, the life that you look at around you is, it's subject to interpretation. It's not always what it looks like it is. I'll give the chat a, a little example. If uh, I won't use any names, that way Moose doesn't think I'm picking on her. But, you know, if you have uh, children, and then they grow to a certain age, 
and then they decide to move on in life and be you know financially uh, independent of you that financially punishes you from getting help from the people that you actually need help from you know like uh if you didn't have a job okay because your offspring are working through the system this somehow has a connection to you <laughs> you're not eligible for this that and the other because of your physical relationships to other people on paper and it's, it's all it's all that it's paper it's where your address is and who you're related to and all that ID crap all these made up things these hmm, fictions it's what I call them it's all made up there's so little reality to uh, hmm, in my opinion to the uh, the physical life that, that I've got is way different than the paper life that I got. Because on paper, I'm, you know, I'm international and, uh, you know, I'm from another bit of dirt and I belong to another corporation. <laughs> Somebody out there actually wants to own my paperwork. Why? Why would anybody want to do a thing like that? And if you look into uh, the straw man, I did a show particularly on that. Try to lead people, hey, to the straw man to look at it to see. Make up your own mind if you believe this is real or not. Whoa, and Rituals is visiting. I didn't see Rituals on the... Uh, must have popped in after I said the hellos. So I will even type into the RLM chat, hey, Ritz. See if he, he or she notices that. And sometimes when uh, I type to people for a while, I'm not sure if they're guys or girls. It never even really occurs to me in certain cases. I just see a name that's familiar on the, the, the screen, and I just react to it and however I feel like talking. But I don't think of people in so much in terms of guys and girls till I'm familiar with them, like Miss Kate or Moose or Cirque. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Hello, honey. Uh, so tonight, what should I do? A per trying to think of a good topic for the 20% off racket this evening. Oh, man. But lately, oh, I'll, I'll just talk about whatever comes up to the brain. And uh, me and Vinny did a, an In a Perfect World the other day. Well, we also did a dork table together on Saturday. And he just had his mind made up about what he wanted to talk about Saturday and and he didn't really participate much in the show with me and so so Tuesday I got a chance to do it right back to him and and uh, it was like we did two different shows like usual me and Vinny working together uh, is it's, it's interesting sometimes he doesn't really pay attention to what I'm talking about when I do, like Mary when I'm doing the show I get people that uh, they like to be on their own idea and not really too concerned with whatever the hell I've got on my mind. But <laughs> it's, it's okay. Uh, I'm not complaining about it so much as pointing out that I recognize it and I think it's the funniest damn... We do the funniest shows sometimes. Anyway. I could only wish to be this as funny alone as I, as I find I am. With, with Vinny or Mary. But uh, tonight, let's see, we what we did a show on the other day that got my attention still, I think, is how as people, and it really ties into what I was reading before the show tonight, we accept the first thing we hear as fact. And this war with Iran, this upcoming banker's little skirmish, it's they're already talking nuclear. Uh, now, you can go back in history and every damn war that probably there's ever really been, somebody lied about something to encourage the violent part of it and uh, control it, you know, the money. Let's sanction these people. Let's punish the population. That's what bombing is, by the way, folks. All you warmongers out there in radio land. I find it hard to believe that you don't understand that all these million dollar planes and these you know, $100,000 bombs, those are for the people of the countries 
that your government doesn't have control over. And that, bombs, <clears throat> is how the governments get control. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really understand how it works because now there's like these refugees from every freaking shithole country on the planet all going to the West. They want to move to where it's civilized. But they don't want to change their ways like myself. I don't want to become a Dane just because I live in Denmark. But I think my situation over... Well, it's not usual. For one, I don't, I don't want anything from the Danish government. They didn't come here. Please help me, Mr. Danish man. Uh... No, that's that's it's a different thing. And if I was going to do anything like that, well, shit, I'd go back to the states where I know how to work my country because I know how my country operates. Now here, I'd be I'd be lost. And these people, the ones that I meet physically, they're really damn nice about their um, they're generous people. They never seem to carry a grudge about having to pay the lion's share of what they get to the state, blah, 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 and all that shit that goes along with it. And in the end, there there seemed to be a, an okayness, I don't know what to call it, with, well, you know, we pay for these people because they're they're not competent or able of taking care of their self. And I don't know how many of them there are. I would assume the people that live here and have businesses and been here their whole life, they know. And I don't believe that they think I'm one of them. But uh, they talk to me like I'm, uh, hmm, like I'm smart enough to know what they're talking about. They're not schooling me. They're not uh, directing me. Which is conversations come up. Whoops. <laughs> oh, my neighbors playing on the streets of Freddy Town on their bikes. And my dog reacting to the loud little motorcycle. So uh, that was an extra treat for all you listeners out there in Radio Land tonight. But uh, anyway, hmm. so I'm kind of wondering, I haven't been out in, in the public eye recently since this new Iran thing popped up, but the... Hmm, the men that I've met at the pub that are uh, pro-America, I would say, they're mostly they lean towards the Trump and the military thing. Hell, one of these guys was uh, he would waited for uh, like a year to go to that Trump. I don't know some kind of uh, like a parade he was having a military thing. I think it was back in November in D.C. But. That isn't the popular uh, popular belief system around here. I don't think these people are real. They're not very angry towards the other guy. There, there's a few foreign people that live in uh, the cities. But overall, these, th these are Danish towns, Danish folk, and they're Danish offspring and all that kind of thing. So... Even I stand out. I don't stand out so much until I actually speak. But mm, some people just get the attention. You know, they get your attention just by passing you by and uh, joining another group in a foreign land and still, you know, like it would be like if I wrapped myself in an American flag and everywhere I went draw that kind of attention to myself to let people know where I'm from. So I guess that was as close to an anti-Arab rant as I'm ever going to get. Because uh, basically I don't think there's any difference between the Arab and, and the, the modern day living Jew in uh, Israel. For example. I mean just for one to to be able to handle the temperatures of the desert, you got to be of a certain um, dexterity in, with your skin. You can't pale light. What Cirque would croak in 118 degrees weather in a desert situation because of her skin. So they'd have to wrap her up in one of those um, black things. <laughs> so her skin wouldn't burn. Now, I wonder if the 
Maybe that's what the problem is. They wear all that protection so they don't burn because they're light-skinned now. <laughs> they're not black people anymore. They're in the Middle East, right? Uh, I don't know. There's just so much confusion with what I read and what I know and then what I, I believe because sometimes they're not all the same. Uh, let me look for a link, see if I can't find anything exciting going on in the world today. Ah, oh, here's something that Moose posted. And it's just a paragraph, but it got it got me going. I'm a little scattered this evening, as usual. But Moose posted this. It's called uh, Obliteration. Trump threatens Iran with nuclear strike. And it says, President Trump has threatened to obliterate parts of Iran, if anything American, is attacked by the country. I don't know how you attack America from Iran, but it, anything's possible. Uh, this combined with all options on the table clearly suggests the use of nuclear weapons. In an article in today's American Conservative, Former U.S. Marine and Nuclear Weapons Inspector Scott Ritter shows how last year's U.S. Nuclear Posture Review outlines scenarios that make this nightmare a possibility. Yeah, last year's U U.S. Nuclear Posture Review. I mean, this is a plan. You guys think that you think that Trump gives a shit whether uh, the military does anything or not? I don't. I don't think he gives a shit. But I did see a link about. All the wonderful things he's done over the years for the military and you know, small groups of people. And it, it's strange how um, acts of kindness by a billionaire that, you know, isn't in politics is recorded and made available to certain groups of other people at certain times to make you look at him and think, oh, well, he's not that bad. Well, my personal opinion about somebody like that is after they pass a million dollars, they're garbage. What do you need a million dollars for? I can't imagine. And I grew up in that life. You know, oh, grow up and get a job and become something and make money and buy this and buy that. And the older I got, the further away I really became mentally from desiring all, all that stuff because uh, well for one I think I learned a lesson with myself is things change and they decay with time you know so you get something in 19 uh, whatever 10 and by 1940 that whatever you bought in 1910 is pretty much run down and it needs help needs repairs maintenance upgrades changes the things that go around it to operate something they upgrade these things so that you have to upgrade shit so that the the machine gets fed. <sighs> I think Mary calls it a the disposable society. I, I didn't coin that phrase. I don't know who coined it, but I heard her use it the most often. So I'm going to credit Little Miss Mary with the disposable society concept of finance. Because, uh, wow, the way we do this shit... Oh, there goes Hannah again. Hannah is enjoying her life today, letting everybody know the world is safe. That think that's how dogs do it. They're barking at you so that you know everything is a okay. <laughs> Stalling here a little bit, looking for something else. Uh, I guess war is. I don't know what is war anyway. We're at war, so I'm going to be in Denmark who is on the U.S. side, you know, the, actually the wrong side, in my opinion, of this whole freaking thing. It's about money. It's about gold, and it's about oil, and it's about controlling populations of human life forms and not ever telling anybody the same story twice. I still can't get over today... When I'm, I see on. I spend a little bit of time on mines on every day. It's it's an interesting little site, and every day I see little things about um, the government's being exposed for this. Or look at what they're doing. And and I saw Bill Clinton. I do a four-minute apology 
about specifically experimenting on the U.S. population without their knowledge or consent. And this is in the 90s, 94 or something. Right? So uh, this concept of the government experimenting on its population goes back a long way. Uh, Clint Richardson, he did radio with UCY. And when I first found the Internet as a source of uh, knowledge, let's say, or information that was not available on uh, CBS or, or ABC or the New York Times or any of that. And uh, now we've got all instant everything. But the flood of knowledge on 58,000 topics, it's overwhelming. So you're going to end up in the same spot at the end of this trap that we were in in the beginning of the trap. The difference will be a bigger cent, a, a bigger cent, a bigger percent of whatever is necessary to actually create some kind of change in this thing. Whatever it might be, a, a stop. It might be a, some people call it a reset, the zombie apocalypse. You know, when we're all like starving and <laughs> eating zombie brains to survive in the wastelands of yesterday. But, see, to keep that crap going, here we go. President Trump's threatened to obliterate parts of Iran. And I just don't get who the hell is Trump to publicly make a statement like that. With and It doesn't mean anything. He's just bullying them. Well, if they do anything, I'm, you know, it's like my father when he went, when I was a child. What were you going to do? The guy was like a giant. <laughs> he had hands like bricks. So you, you go, okay, Pop, I'll do it. You know, you don't fight. Then you get a little older and you start to think about shit. Well, America's like a child that never freaking developed. I mean, the mentality of the warmonger, anyhow. I don't get the... Uh, how, how you, let me start this again. I'm getting just flustered trying to think about a way to express. I grew up through the Vietnam. Okay. So what Vietnam taught me as I was growing up was the reality of what wars were. And I understood when I was a child, this is not a war. This is a, uh, they called it a police action. The Vietnam crisis. It was never supposedly a declared war. Well, yeah, because when you find out how the U.S. finally got their grubby mitts involved in it, it was the U.S. that did something and then claimed it was their enemy that instigated it, and it wasn't, just like usual. So here we are, 2019. New piece of shit in the White House. New country to hate. It's not Persia anymore. Now it's Iran. And everybody from the Vietnam era, most of them are either mental, too old to be taken seriously, or nobody remembers what they, what we saw. It's gone. And, uh, wow. Trying to explain, I suppose, what did go on, it brings the split, it puts the divide in there. Then you're either for it or you're again it. It's it's not possible for me to um, imagine looking at a war situation with any group of people. And if you're in, if you're told about it, you're more than likely going to pick a side to be on regarding it. You know, Rob Works and Larry Woods and Vinny and you know all the guys out there that have led me to the uh, vibrations and the the resonance of life, well, the popular thing right now, I mean, is to destroy Iran. Now, I don't see two words about, well, if they had a central bank, we might forgive them. Hold on a second. Hannibal. Thank you. Good girl. Uh, my dog came in. I just want to make sure she didn't bark so loud you guys couldn't hear me talk. She had, what's that? Oh, okay, I see you. Thank you, sweetie. I was getting the up, the update from the wife about her and the dog. Live on the RealLibertyMedia.com chat. 
So I don't know. I guess. Uh, Welcome, flashy boo. <laughs> Thanks, sir. <laughs> okay. I guess uh, my aversion to uh, I, most everything that happens in life just irritates the shit out of me at, at some level or to some point, to some degree. And yet, I realize on another kind of another layer of it that doesn't involve me. And my input to it, my opinions about it, don't seem to have anything to do with the, with what's going on. But I believe that the side that you choose in it somehow helps the momentum. Cirque's got a nice way of she calls it the void. It's like uh, like the the Borg on Star Trek. You know, whatever this thing is, it assimilates the whatever it sees. And it sucks up all their intelligence and all their resources and all their abilities. And it adds it to their own. And it just gets bigger. But it serves no purpose. The Borg has never been anything but an enemy in that Star Trek thing. And uh, they don't think for their self. Hmm. They do everything that the hive mind directs them to do. Now, is that is that really sci-fi or is that just some people getting stoned? And looking around the world and going, hey, you know what? This is probably what is really going on. <laughs> it's, uh, I read another link the other. I think it was today or the other day. Guy designed a some kind of conversion kit to make, get your vehicle to get a hundred miles to the gallon, and it was verified and certified and copyfied, and now he's dead. So hmm. anybody that goes forward and tries to make any kind of change to this oil crap ends up disappearing or somebody buys their knowledge and it, it gets buried and they never go anywhere with it now I think this is all part of the game you know just keep the small guy down and just sell Monsanto you don't need you don't need anybody else's crap we got Monsanto they're making GMO food and this that and the other whatever that stuff's all truly about but the control, that that's where we're at. Or there wouldn't be, <laughs> excuse me, there wouldn't be laws against growing your own food. Uh, hold on one second here, folks. But there are laws against growing your own food in certain areas of the world at this point in time. There's laws against, you name it, there's a law against gathering your own rainwater. <laughs> They figured out they can stop you from gathering rainwater, and because the government is claiming ownership to this too, they own the water. Uh, I seen a link the other day that made me kind of giggle. It said, you know, if they found gold or oil on your property, they own it. But if they find drugs on your property, hey, you own that. <laughs> How come it's it's always selective when uh, you involve the system in your life, or what the system involves itself in your life? And uh, that was a 20-minute link that she put up. It was mostly a uh, video, and but they had that little paragraph. And when I opened it, I just wanted to give it a shot and let everybody know that wow, I guess we're on schedule. For whatever's going on, I, I don't really know how to decipher any of this crap. It, it's always easier to understand five years later after they're finished. Ten years later, twenty, whatever the, the game is. But this Middle East, um, ISIS, and what else was that shit about? Uh, hmm. I can't even think of the names of these organizations. The Arabs. They were all financed by the same people they were fighting we're getting financed by the same people they were fighting. Now that's driving me to my marijuana pipe at 29 after the hour. Because Vinny would say 420 and I don't give a shit. 429 is good enough for me. Oh man. What would we have to do to collectively live in a, in a world that was not run by psychopaths and morons? Greedy, just greedy people from whatever part of the planet they're from. 
you know the the truly entitled the the royal families these these are the people that need to be attended to paid attention to look at the shit the they are the most worthless absolutely do fuck all for anybody people on the planet but hey <laughs> they're superior because they got special bloodlines yeah well i seen somebody trace the queen of england back to germany so hmm, makes me wonder uh change your name put a stamp on a fancy piece of paper and the next thing you know, hey, you're the president of the United States. They just shut everybody up. If you argue with this, you're a racist. If you argue with that, you're a what? What? What is it now? If you argue with Trump, uh, or if you go against Trump, now they got this crap uh, about you have some kind of anti-Trump syndrome or some stupidity of that nature. I wouldn't trust anybody sitting in that seat. No fucking way. No fucking how. Look at how it's degraded. You look at the beginning of the story. These guys, they were willing to risk their life and their fortune to get away from this thing that they was being held captive by mentally and physically. They're going to start their own thing and include everybody, you know, except the slaves and, you know, the poor people, the women and the children. But all the men, well... We're going to take care of everything for you, baby. You watch. And then we get these watered-down stupid stories about the revolution and how it happened, why it happened, where it happened, what became of it, what they don't tell you in school that you find out in books after, after you leave school, is that, for example, that the English did not actually physically declare leaving the states, the new territory, until into the 1790s. It was like after 20 years after the revolution took place. Another 20 years, then the English got up and left in the 1790s, late 90s. And then they declared war on us again, trying to get it back from one more time in 1812. And they burned that place to the ground. But magically, here we are today with what they didn't burn <laughs> so no history i don't i'm like mary i don't i don't trust history don't uh the word and vinny vinny's done more with the words and what the words mean than i do but i think i've just got this um something maybe like a bell that goes off in my head when i hear something that strikes me as not possible i think is the word for it because there's lots of things that people will say are possible because you can talk about them. Hey, I'll give you an example of possible. There's this new thing going on in the States. It's called if you're a real bizarro and you want to have a like a, a service done, cake or something like that, you go to some place that's got religious ties and refuses service to you so that you ignore all the people that would be willing to make your, you know, your birthday cake or wax your parts or whatever, all those people you ignore all them, because there's plenty of them. There's people out there will do anything as long as you pay them. So to pick on the one place that has some kind of, uh, oh, I don't know, religious values and say no, I'll do anything for you, my friend, but that I won't do that. You know, the old meat loaf song. Uh, and then the one thing that they refuse to do, to me, seems fairly normal. They got a, a guy that claims to be a woman, but he wants them to wax her balls. And I don't know what planet you live on in this world that you believe a woman has testicles, but hmm, you've been lied to. <laughs> <laughs> women do not have testicles on the outside with hair on them to be waxed. It's, it's a story. But apparently, now there's, you know, there's laws to protect everybody <clears throat> from everything except <laughs> the things that you actually need to be protected from because, well, they do those things within the guidelines of what's legal, like Flint, Michigan. 
I uh, got really d disappointed reading about that. Uh, they had nine people. They were going to draw a chart. They were going to drop charges and put on a performance for the public and do something. And the Justice Department a few weeks ago said nay. I've yet to see them do anything further except reject any kind of uh, financial responsibility for what took place. And apparently, their water system got poisoned. Must have been an accident because, you know, there's... there. Hmm. How do you poison a city's water supply? I think one way would be to build a manufacturing process and dump your waste in the city water, what people drink. And... As long as the laws are written so that you're not breaking any laws doing this shit, 20 years later down the road when, you know, whatever comes of your epic business venture happens, who's going to be responsible? You know, nobody. Because <laughs> we, we live in a, uh, I don't know what we live in collectively. I don't care for it much, though. I am for, like, a few things. Like, what would I be for? Um, hmm. I would be for something that would benefit everybody. And when you say things like that, the, the mind always, always tease Cirque about, well, you're just a fucking communist. You live in Denmark, and you pay high taxes, and this, that, and the other. And as far as, you know, I can tell from what I've read, the people that... Uh, have something bad to say about my wife <laughs> will always lean to communist and I don't see any difference between a communist and a capitalist you're still doing the same stupid shit you're just doing it in a different way so what did that leave us with oh anarchy and the, the sad part about anarchy is my version of what anarchy is doesn't seem to match what everybody else's version of what the word means is. So, hmm. But I believe that I live my physical life in an anarchist fashion. I don't go around purposely doing anything to anybody, you know. If I'm going to destroy something, it's going to be with a shovel. I'll be digging a hole to plant something, uh, put something new in the garden, or uh, Maybe a trash can lid because I'm throwing something out. But that's, you know, that's my violence now is just cleaning up a mess that uh, might have grown in the yard. Or maybe I neglected something and I need to go pick it up <clears throat> and, I, and then I dump in the garbage can. That's it. I'm an old guy now. Things changed. My, my side of responsibility in uh, the physical life world is minimal. Uh, very fortunate, and we're we're having our own version of a heat wave over here. The last couple of days, it's been a little bit high in the humid department. I think yesterday the humidity was at 77 percent, and it doesn't get that warm. It's like the high 70s or something, mid 70s. Sometimes it'll hit 80, but still, I'm from the desert, so my body is never. Uh, was I grew up in it, so I think I acclimated to that particular um, temperate zone. And as I traveled in my life, I noticed that I handle myself physically much better in the desert than I ever have uh, on the coast or in the mountains or like where I'm at now. And this humidity, woo wee! I don't complain much about weather, but I think out of the hot or the cold, that's that's the the one part where I, I'm not designed to, to beat it. It whips my happy ass big time. So, you know, I'm getting my few days of few and I say few days of discomfort. And maybe I'll get a week of this. But I, in the long run it's a small price to pay. And it would be uh, we open a few windows in the house and, and the Usually there's a breeze, but yesterday there wasn't even any wind. So it was a little bit uncomfortable. So yeah, you get to hear me bitch about the weather a 20% off. 
And I'm not so much complaining. I'm just disappointed that uh, something so easy like a little weather can control me so completely. Keep me uh, limited. Hmm. And I'm not so sure that doesn't happen to uh, other people from other places, other zones, where they're from, how it affects them living in these uh, warmer and colder places than where they're from. Well, maybe it's just me, but um, I don't spend any time w thinking about it too much. But uh, it came up to me uh, tonight on 20% off because, you know, I guess I'm a little bit off. Well, what do we got? Maybe we got something interesting in the RLM chat. Maybe I'll pop in there and open up something and see if I can't find something to read to you fine folks on uh, this Thursday evening. Uh, what do we got going on from uh, Anti? Oh, he's got something about Volvo. Turn signal switch change replacements. Yeah, I think the uh, Anti drives a Volvo. He was looking for another machine or something or looking into a car last week. Me, I have no interest in vehicles at this point in my life. I hope it stays that way. I guess if I, uh, if I ever had to go back to the States, first thing I'd do would probably be get a car. <laughs> I, and uh, I have a big family back in the States, too, uh, scattered from one side of the country to the other. Oh, hold on one second. But... Uh, it's just strange that I've, I've got no desire to uh, really get involved with all that that negative family stuff because of the politics and the religion and the education in it. My uh, my personal stands in life have definitely driven they've driven wedges into the relationships that I've had with family and friends over the years that most of the stuff can't be fixed. People make up their mind, I make up my mind, and that's the end of it. It's There's never a bend, never a change. If I don't find Jesus and, you know, and find a decent way to support myself and da-da-da, all these things and rules, well, then I can't be a good person. <laughs> and, so, I settled for, wow, that's kind of a fucked up way to think, but, hmm, okay, you know, if that's the way you believe life is, then I need to stay away from you and not associate with you because obviously my lifestyle makes your tumor bleed. But, uh, <coughs> sorry folks, I, could, I couldn't hit the mute, I was doing something. Uh, little pipe load activity going on over here in Denmark this evening. But yeah, people are unforgiving. I'm unforgiving, I think, sometimes, depending on the person and the topic. Uh, and other people don't, they don't, it, everything rolls off there. Like Vinny. Vin doesn't matter what you say or do to Vinny. Vinny will find a way to ignore it and just go forward. That's how I take that, uh, his ability to want to continue to talk to people that are on the other side of his stand in, in like the Bundy thing. And he's he's right there. Hey, you want to talk about it? I'm I'm here. And I'm the opposite of it. I I'm so used to uh, the opposition pounding on me about you know what I think and how I see it, and it's all wrong. I, I'm used to it. So for anybody to accept it at this point in life is weird. You're the stranger. Grim and Rob works, and who else is out there? Anti, uh, Rome's. Uh, Goober was here for a bit, but he split. Rituals. Well, the few people that... Um, hmm. uh, how do you put it? I guess that it's obvious that some people, they may not be so negative towards the anarchist kind of thing about not needing people to rule them. Uh, I don't know what that divisive part of this is where you just... Don't feel the, the need to be controlled. Uh, I guess society looks at us and, and treats us like we're a bunch of freaking idiot children. And without society's rules and regulations that we'd all be doomed. We're all in, in ill-equipped and inept boobs. 
We're not capable of doing anything on our own by ourselves. We need government protections because everybody in business is a crook. And everybody that buys things from people in business is an idiot. There you go. And I, when I got into sales, I thought we still communicated with people back in those days. Talking about stuff was uh, the way you would open the door to bring up something to a pro, you know, prospective customer to sell them something. And it was a new idea, so it hadn't been uh, abused by the crooks at that point in time. In the late 70s, I was still getting like, what, you're, you're going to do what on the phone, son? Yeah, I'll send you out this, that, and the other, and blah, blah. And people were still in the hands-on world where they had to go down to the store and take the time off their jobs and do this, go look for shit. And here we were. We're saying, hey, if you got some <clears throat> unusual parts, blah, 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 tools, whatever it was at the time I was looking to get rid of, making it available to them on a phone call, was that was life-changing. Because if you've ever had to work on a, some kind of an engine or some kind of a machine of any kind, really, you come to a point where if you don't have the proper tools, you can't do the proper job. And that's where we came from. Things were made, and they were made to last, and they lasted a long time. But, of course, certain things had like a, a life expectancy. So, there you go. The That disposable kind of uh, deal was already in, it was already in the game, but the, the amount of time that the shit lasted was a lot longer back in my day <laughs> than it is now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, let me change topics one more time. Uh, I saw a thing on my <laughs> on mine's. There, uh, people are convinced that growing hemp will damage the earth because that's how you know ignorant they are. They don't realize that it's the one plant um, that could save the planet. And there's a handful of uh, people out there promoting. Hemp will help, you know, if you did this. But then the opposition is like they're treating it like trees. Well, yeah, but then, you know, you have, you can't use the land for, you know, yeah, you can. The, <laughs> the cycle that, that the ground goes through new, with nutrients and making the, the plants grow and all that and repairing after you harvest it is way quicker with hemp than it is with uh, trees. But I guess all that stuff would go down to your, your, your personal taste. Oh, I want my desk in oak. Oh, I want my shoes in mahogany. <laughs> oh, I want my condoms made out of redwood. You know, whatever the tree of your, your dreams is, you can have shit made out of it. And we're, we're kind of uh, prejudiced and stuck on certain certain ideas, certain things, certain labels that we've known all our life. You know? So giving up wood and replacing it with hemp in a, to a moron that doesn't know what the fuck the difference is in the first place, that could be a problem. Oh, anti brought up 5G. Okay, well, I can do a short show tonight, I guess. I, I don't really have any, any reading material. I was just, eh. Spur of the moment, off the cuff, what comes to mind, what I read. And I have the, the same uh, opinion about the 5G. It's a weapons-grade uh, form of whatever that is. Wavelength. Microwave. There you go. See, I didn't have the written in front of me. I have to go off memory. Hmm. Probably not, Rob. I don't know. I'm, I just... Uh, some nights I've got a lot on my mind and got a reason to, to do a radio show, and other nights ah, I don't really have anything going on. But tonight, hmm, well, I don't know. I'm a little disappointed in the war thing, I suppose. I'm taking it personal in a sense because this government fucking shit here in Denmark has to side, hey, rituals, thanks. But the U.S. and Denmark and all the, you know, the English-speaking, anti-Muslim 
um, countries have to stick together and uh, do this performance dance. And the only one that's probably going to come out of it with any uh, real success is Poland. And Poland has taken a stand against the immigration thing long ago. But I don't live in Poland, so hmm, I can't say from my experience if it's any better or worse to live in Poland than Denmark or I don't know. I don't think it's any better or worse to live in America than Denmark. I just think my wife is happier because it's so much less intrusive. Um, we have a lot of personal freedom is recognized where I live. People here would be uh, so shocked to be treated in Freddie Town to where somebody is treated in, say, New York or L.A. or Miami <laughs> or Philadelphia, Boston, Chicago, Minneapolis, Sacramento, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, Tacoma, Washington State. Well, the point I was just trying to make is America is so big that you're bound to find whatever you look for. So hmm, I have a different opinion than my wife about where I'm from. You know, she's bullied by the links and the deaths. Oh, the, the cop killings. That story about the Australian woman, I think it was in St. Paul, Minneapolis or somewhere. It was somewhere like Wisconsin or maybe it was Minnesota. I might have the wrong state. But a woman calls the police and ends up getting shot and killed by the police. And that's... If, you know, there's so many states and so many countries and so many cities that if you just bombard the population every day with enough trouble, enough problems, enough disappointment, at some part of that person's um, existence, they're going to hit a numb spot where all these bad things don't, doesn't even rack, doesn't rock them a bit. They're just cool with it. And some people will even be behind and for suggesting support for whatever your crime might be. Now, personally, I think these bankers wars are crimes. The people that get hurt the most, the military, and the civilians, the, the, the kids that do the, the shit, the physical shit, then they get used up, just like they did in Vietnam. This is why I don't understand. When I, when I was in Jacksonville, I could not understand the mentality of the military mind. Even the people that were in the military that I was associating with it at the time were mostly complaining about how little uh, the military supported their family and you know what they needed, what they had signed on for, compared to what they were getting was not the same thing. Well, didn't Vietnam treat, teach you that that's what the government will do to you with military? Just like anything else, until you have a certain uh, rank or until you're rubbing nuts with the right people, you ain't going anywhere in this life. Whatever going somewhere means to the masses is usually promotion or accumulating wealth. <laughs> We're not going to do any of that shit. Nobody that's on the RLM is ever going to accumulate any kind of wealth. We, we, hmm. Some folks do better than others, but my opinion of what wealth is, no, we don't have it. Trump has it. Trump's always had it, though. He was a, mil uh, mil he was a limousine baby from a, a German family that wasn't welcome in Germany. <laughs> I had a Dane telling me about that t the other day at the bar, I think. is uh, Trump family was originally called Drump, and this Dane's telling me this, and I'm just letting him speak, not letting him know I know already, so he could tell me something in English. It was really fascinating, and uh, yeah, the Germany, Germany did, no, did not want them there, so they went to America, and then look at all the shit that the Trumps got into while they were in America, like the Bushes, all that dirty, nasty, wheelie dealy shit and behind everything. And on the on the surface to the public eye you're you're this different person. <laughs> I still can't get over how when uh Trump was a, a Hill Dog supporter a long time, him and 
Bill Clinton and Hillary were living up, you know, living it up and hanging out and being buddies and all that. Then uh, 20 years go by and he runs against Hill Dog in, in the public eye and they're the worst. They don't get along. She needs to go to prison, blah, 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 blah. And the, the only thing I, I've noticed that the lack of is her age. You know, people, how old is somebody punishable? You know, uh, is there an age limit that goes along with, you know, you did all these horrible, shitty things. You broke the law, blah, blah, blah. Now we've caught you, we've proved it in court, and here we're going to punish you. So they've got this relic. Now she's in her freaking 70s, Hill Dog. Uh, she isn't the healthiest looking woman in the group, on top of that, uh, my opinion. And then they post things like, I saw her having like a trembling attacks like Merkel. Is this stuff more staged shit, you know, for us to... Have that sympathy bone be a little polishing on your sympathy bone so that when they don't do anything to Hill Dog, you'll just kind of sit back and not let it bother you so much because what are you going to do to her You know, that's going to punish her? All these years, since the Nixon days, this woman has been in, in the seat of control or influence in uh, the biggest game on the planet. And then this... Uh, pretending to make her the first woman president and all, all this disappointment that came with it. I think that was all a setup. I don't think that uh I don't think that whoever sits in the White House they don't have to do anything. They just <laughs> to to get that. They get to they have to be selected by whoever this electoral college people <laughs> is. It's so complicated. It's really hard to to really make any sense of it. And then talk about it on a little radio show in the first place, especially alone. But the amazing part is so many people are okay with what happens. They complain, oh, I don't like this guy, or like me, with when it was Obama or Bush or Clinton. I don't like any of these fucking guys. What the fuck does it matter who's sitting in that seat? And depending on the color of the person... And the guy in the seat at the time, well, he's our president. He's going to do this and he's going to do that. He didn't do shit. They don't see that. The average guy does not really understand that uh, what you're told is just the pretty much the exact opposite of what the reality is. Hmm. And Rob Work says, fuck punishment. We need riddance. Yeah, well, my... my hmm. My answer to solving these problems is not acceptable with the mainstream of people. I think that uh, groups this size should not exist. That's how the problems all in happening in the first place. My group is going to take on your group and we're going to kick the shit out of you and this, that, and the other. And it's all basically in my humble little opinion about... Uh, we're just taught wrong how to live, why we're alive, what we're doing on this rock, planet, life thing, uh, how we interact with it, what we do while we're here. Some people, oh man, uh, hold on one second here, let me hit this pipe. Well, <clears throat> some people all suck. They all I don't know. I should have read that better. But yeah, Smite says they all suck. They're talking about the politicians. Well, I don't really know. I've never met any of these people. So to me, all this stuff is like watching a movie, you know, and at the end, you get to see the real name of the person you just spent an hour and a half pretending to be somebody else. And that's how I see politics and people in the public eye. Maybe my radio thing. See, this is not the words that I use on the radio are not necessarily the same words I would use in a Danish pub bar to speak to a, a local person. I might soften my delivery on certain topics just to avoid a problem in public with understanding because you know people when you're drinking especially man that's the time for somebody to not know what the fuck you're talking about 
So the cornerstone, what's got me around having to learn a whole new language is that, that idea is that, you know, if I try to speak your language and I say it wrong, what are you going to do? You know, you're going to correct me. And then how am I going to know I said it wrong? What am I going to understand about what word I mispronounced? Do you know how people can get? If you've been in a situation where foreign language was uh, involved, you, you know how people can be. They just uh, anal about ideas or especially drinking. Drinking makes you all, you know, loose and wobbly. So you hear what you hear in that drunken state of mind. Ooh, it's different. So when I go to the grocery store, the last thing I'm going to ever do is talk about, you know, politics or religion. It's about the food I got. I'm glad you're open so I could come here and buy it because I don't have a farm. <laughs> Me and my wife just live up the road. <laughs> so, so it's really nice to have this convenience of I can get an evening walk and uh, see the little bit of Denmark and the little houses and the kids playing sometimes whatnot. See people on their way home from work, you know, after their slavery, and they're on their way home. And, and some of these folks, uh, if it depends on the time of day, they ride the same train. Now, if I go at to pick circa at specific time, I'm going to run into certain people. And over the years, we're just so familiar with each other. Uh, Hannah used to, when she was really young, she was a little jumpy and would try to get on people. And the same people that have seen that dog, you know, grow up now when they just pass each other and it's such the calm, familiar, hey, hey, Hannah, kind of thing now where it started out with some crazy little mutt trying to, you know, crawl up on somebody's pants like for a pet. And now she doesn't do that anymore. She's a mature young dog, <laughs> sort of, with a barking attitude, but... Uh, uh-oh, anti says I got a major summer cold. Okay, this is the part of 20% off where I'm going to take it upon myself to mention to anti, you cannot overdose on um, natural vitamin C uh, to a degree. I mean, you can, I've taken as many as uh, 10,000, what is it, milligrams at one time. It's like 10 capsules or 20 capsules. I had something buzzing in my ear, and I, you know, smoker and this, that, and the other, cold. But uh, I took enough vitamin C to, to knock it out at one sitting. Or you could do it the normal way, and uh, you can do some reading on the internet. It'll tell you there's backup for what I'm saying to you. But uh, vitamin C is the best thing for me when I feel cold uh, symptoms coming on. But I'm a smoker and a pot smoker, so I put my physical body through a little more torment and bring myself uh, into that, you know, area where I can catch a cold. So I use Remedy. Vinny doesn't like it when I say things cure stuff, but I like Remedy. Makes me feel better and, uh, oh, turmeric also helps with that. Uh, it's a curry. I got introduced to turmeric from Larry Woods, and I thought, when he first told me about it, it was kind of weird. It was a strange concept. I'm not from a, a culture that uses curry. So outside of, yo, the Indians use curry in their cooking, spicy, and the, you know, the stories you hear. Or if you'd ever been to a, an Indian restaurant, maybe you had it, it's, it's a spicy kind of a food. But then so is Mexican food or Jewish food. You know, whatever culture, there's usually spicy foods attached to it. So it wasn't like a shock, but uh, it was amazing to find out that turmeric has so many uh, re hmm, the the results of using it. I uh, stuck for a word there, sorry folks. But the results of using turmeric are far more successful than some of the information that's available to us through. Uh, traditional fashion and what else have I got the baking soda doesn't hurt me at all uh, I think uh, I don't know what it does to plant life but hmm. <laughs> that just crossed my mind I wonder what it would do to the plants if I want if I threw a little baking soda see I like to experiment with stuff 
and find out, you know, hands on what it'll do. Because I can, you can read and get taught, you know, get uh, led to try anything. Uh, but there's a lot of good information, and I guess the only way to prove it is to try it. That's what I've spent a lifetime doing. When people told me, oh, if you hitchhike in Texas, the the rednecks will get you and they'll cut your hair off and da 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 and do this and that and I never had any of that happen. I don't maybe I just never met the red the right redneck in my life or something, but uh no. In in public life, uh I've never had anybody threaten me because my hair isn't the right length. I've had a few people, you know, roll an eye or two or look the other way when I come around them, but eh, it's the shock because uh, there's still a lot of that uh, cut your hair kind of mentality in life. Uh, I don't know where that could have possibly came from, though. <laughs> it I guess it saves you soap and water to have short hair, but what are the benefits of staying clean shaven and have your hair short? I've read quite the opposite that you're actually that your your hair is in like an antenna of some kind or another. Now what it puts your body in tune with, there's so much going on in my body all the time that I'm not physically aware of, mentally aware of, I don't know. I'm just walking across the room and all these cells are doing this and doing that and my spleen's doing this, my heart's doing this, my liver's doing that. My leg muscles are doing something completely different. So I got raised with that concept about, well, you only use 10% of your brain. And I think what they neglect to, to finish, there's more to that sentence. I think what they meant to say, or what I, hey, Dr. Cooper, uh, not meant to say, but how I interpret this is, you're only uh, capable of using 10% of your available brain. The rest of what your brain does, it does behind your consciousness for you. And that led me to all kinds of other interesting doorways, like uh, Mary. I wonder, too, Mary, if uh, Mary on from the Rocketeer podcast, I wonder if I can communicate with the cells on some level of consciousness. But hmm, who knows? How do you know from what the results are from the action that you take? Um, like being mentally against the war, does that physically bring me closer to people that are like that? I think it does. Uh, and when I find myself around a warmonger in public, I can get up and leave. I don't I don't have a problem. You know, there's there's no argument about them being for something I'm against in that situation. Cause what are you gonna do but argue? So why why initiate it? Because uh, you know in society they always say, you know, just keep in a bar, keep politics and religion, don't even bother with any of that shit. And you know what people do? They don't listen to advice. Whatever people are told to do or not to do, they do the opposite of one, the, one or the other. Very few folks uh, listen or have the interest in following through with what you're telling them. Like me and Anti right now. I suggest Anti does something to beat this cold. Whether he does it or not, it's on him. Okay. I see Grimner posted... Uh, ah! Uh, oh, they did, they're just doing the, the weather. 42.6 degrees Celsius equals Fahrenheit. Yeah, all you got to do to figure out the, uh, the difference between Celsius and Fahrenheit is double your Fahrenheit degree and add 30 and you'll come up with a round number that's close enough to be considered accurate so if it was 12 degrees Celsius it would actually be um, 24 plus 30 so it'd be 54 Celsius or it's 54 Fahrenheit sorry bye 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 see I I'm not a good teacher <laughs> time Beatles saying time for some coffee now, we got a few chatters on the RLM this, uh, my evening time is their afternoon out there in uh, Radio Land. You know, when I get up in the morning, I don't know how many people have ever heard me even bring this up, but when I get up in the morning, it's my peers 
are usually it's the, the end of their day, the late night, the evening, late evening, early part, 10, 11 o'clock, something like that. So they're, you know, they're dropping off. They got work. They got families. They got this, that, and the other, and they're going to go to bed. So the only downside I really have uh, in the electronic world living out here is that I'm living in the future. So while you're asleep, I'm usually awake, and when you're awake, I'm usually asleep. Or most of it. Enough of it to make a noticeable difference in uh, the times that I'm available to communicate because of my lifestyle. Hold on one second. Let me deal with this pipe real quick. Oh, here we go. <laughs> ah, um, I'm doing, I'm taking one for the team. People out there in Radio Land, out there in our land, other places. Grim Putts is all over the place. I have no idea where the show goes or. Everybody else keeps up with it. I tried, and I don't know. I don't still don't take this all too seriously, but I have a few opinions about a, a million topics, and some of them are relevant to uh, this, that, and the other, and some of them are just shit. You know, we, we've we done things. We've been to places. You know, this happened. That happened. I worked for this place. And uh, you have your stories and your memories and the shit you can tell people. But the stuff that matters in life, wow. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe it's bigger than I think or maybe on the other hand, it's smaller than I think. And I'm looking at it. See, hmm. this is a weird way. To, I've not tried to figure out a way to explain this one yet to anybody else. But... I see the world in my own, I get told, my own unique way. When I was young, they said, well, you, you live in your own little world. I heard that from a lot of people over a lot of years. And to this day, you know what I still hear? Exactly. Now, some of that rhetoric would come from people because, well, for one, I'm pro-cannabis. Uh, if anything, I think that the, the cannabis that I use and the way that I use it helps me in ways that I'm physically showing. But mentally, I can't prove them to people. But the older I get, I've noticed that with the, the additives that I, I've added on because of Larry and Mary and Vinny and uh, people I've met on the Internet that I don't give credit to because, wow, it gets hard for me to start naming people after like three or four names. Then I forget who did I say. <laughs> so I, I try to keep the list small. But, you know, take it to heart, folks, that uh, we're all here for a reason of some kind or another. But it's to me, it's, it's not for you. It, my reason is for me. Something I'm doing in my life is uh, pleasing... <laughs> The thing that I do, you know, uh, I get a good result out of living because I think I put into life what I take out of life. You know, I I bring shit to the party. I never come to the party empty-handed. Uh, and sometimes, like yesterday, I'll give me a short story about my crazy wife. We have this patio, and. We've not really been paying much attention. We've just been putting stuff in it and just let it accumulate. And it has a floor of rocks. It's an outdoor patio. And circa yesterday, I want to clean all this up and put a carpet thing down. And that's, that was that. So in, in you know the heat, <laughs> this is probably why I was sniveling about the weather so much through, through the show. is because of the heat, uh, I, I'm limited to the amount of liver... I didn't physically do for so long because I get so drained and, and you know, moist in, in, in the humidity. And my peers here in Denmark, their physical reaction to the weather is different. They, they, ex, their body accepts it easier than mine does. And they're so understanding. These women, yeah, ah, you just do the stuff that we have trouble with. And that's all we need, you know, and then we'll do the rest. There you go. And even being a small man is an advantage physically because there's just things that we can lift or move or balance that women 
struggle with because of those beauties on their chest called boobs, baby. That's right. The bigger the boobs, the weirder the balance. That's all I can say. So, <laughs> I don't know. I, I ran amok for a moment. Hmm. Let me read. I'm just going to read this. Official data shows fiat currency is used 800 times more than Bitcoin to launder money on the dark net. Now, I, I've i never myself been on, uh, what was that, uh, the dark net? They had a, had a name for the, for, can't remember what it was called. Hmm. I got it completely lost it, but everybody calls it out, you know, out loud, the dark net, but it used to have a name. And when I was in, uh, in Scotland, the, uh, state was investigating the internet huge. They got a lot of control in Scotland on the internet. You have a lot less freedom with what you say or do in the UK on online than anywhere I'd ever been. And, uh, I was looking for alternatives to, you know, the Windows Google trap thing, the mainstream thing. And the site that I had been told about was getting investigated by the uh, Scottish government. So the guy that the computer store that was helping me get what little bit of shit I needed to get done recommended that I didn't I didn't even bother to open it because Later on, it, it could screw me over with you know immigration and being a visitor and doing all this weird stuff on the internet's not a good idea. Leave it alone. You're not qualified enough to deal with it. Was pretty much what I got from the kid. And uh, I can't think of the name of it, but yeah, it'll probably come to me when I when I end uh, when I end the show. I'll remember the name of the damn thing. But it was uh, a lot of people would go to use that this part of the internet to score drugs, pot, because I smoked a lot with people. And whatever the hell that smoking thing's about, it's just always been a social... It's I can always find the people that smoke. I don't know. We, we just know each other in public, and bonds are made because of the cannabis connection. Uh, Silk Road. That's what it was called. I'm pretty sure that was the, and this is going, whoops, uh, thanks guys, ah, the Harleys of Summer in Freddie Town, yeah, the bikers, get, they like to show off a little bit, they're not completely insane about it, but they got a few of the guys that want to ride up the road and remind you that they're there, and unfortunately for you folks, I had the windows open today for a little, you know, it's air conditioning in Denmark is open to freaking windows. It never gets that hot to uh, require it to be 60 degrees. Well, maybe it does, but not to me. So, where was I before? <laughs> I can't keep a thought straight in my mind tonight. Uh, but, oh, yeah, we got Rob Works and Beetle going on about something here. Oh, uh, Beetle's bragging about getting paid to drive is the shit. I wouldn't like to do it, but I'm glad you're pleased. Uh, I don't like work. Work just makes my tumor swell. I, I like to do things that I want to do because now I'm old. I think that's what it was. I started out in the workforce at such a young age and continue to work for, you know, a lot of years after all that. So hmm, I feel I've, I've done my, uh, my share of social driven work. I'm not going to do any of that anymore. But the conditioning of the status mind, you know, uh, people just assume that everybody lives hand to mouth, that that's the status. That's the way it is. Well, maybe it is, maybe it ain't. I don't, I don't think in those terms. So money, I, the older I get, good God, just what if you get sick? Well, why don't you dig a freaking hole and I'll fall in it. You know, uh, I've had a good life. So I think that anything that would happen to me from the point I'm at today, you know, going forward, if any bad thing happens, I brought it on. It's not, <laughs> I don't live like everybody else. So in my mind, it's not chance and 
you're lucky and no when you survive and you live good you're you're doing things correctly that's the the thing to life is good god is the connections with other people that you make that are so much more valuable than any amount of freaking paper or you know a document with numbers on it that, that might impress you doesn't i i don't see it i would never for want to be donald trump i i enjoy being me i like my life the way i live my life and wow when i've tried to explain to other people what i've done or and how i've done it the hmm, the interpretation is very, very rarely ever understood, I think, the way that I, I meant to deliver it. So I do it on the radio to really make it more, more difficult, I think, in the long run. Well, I'm trying to make it simple, but words, ask Vinny or Mary, words are not what we believe them to be. You know, they've, uh, <laughs> they've managed to water it down, so we're using... Uh, we're using different languages within the same language. So uh, we're using words that certain classes of people would never use. That might be it because, you know, we do chants and rituals and repeat things, repetition. <laughs> All these mental things that we think. Hmm. The more I get into this game, the older I get, the closer I'm getting to having a a working knowledge maybe I at least feel like i have a functioning knowledge of i'm vibrating here <laughs> my voice is vibrating and the equipment is recording it and the equipment is delivering it to you and the only thing you get on the radio is the vibration of the voice that i'm you know projecting to you and the thoughts behind whatever the fuck i say while i'm bantering on about whatever the hell's on my mind but i guess the point is it's at some level this is nothing more than your reaction to me vibrating so i get a good uh good response i get people tell me after the show on the rlm chat now and again thanks a lot you know I, they enjoyed the show and sometimes well not sometimes let me let me be blunt every time i do a show and I don't blame this on the pot. I think it's just because when I start out, it's, you know, this time of evening. And when I end, it's that time of evening. And I'm busy doing it. So I have, for two hours, I just kind of go into this blank, or however long I do a show. And I don't retain what I just talked about. I'm just moving on into the next, you know, this is leading to that, leading to this, leading to something different try to tell an amusing tale or a story or a joke or whatever the hell I do on this voice a crazy an opinion about uh, how I see the world but I believe that I'm the one that judges my happiness I don't allow the state to do that uh, I don't allow other people their judgments of my life uh, hmm, they don't really unless they're positive I don't think they they weigh into my own uh, self-image. That that might be what I'm looking for. Because what I see I am and what other people see I am based on the vibration of my voice on a radio program or the vibration of my text. Yeah, Moose, I'm still here. Why, you want me to get off? You want to do a show? Yeah, you can... I'll get off and you can do a show if you want to. I was just doing my Thursday night, 20% off. Try to talk about a few things that are a little bizarre maybe or shit that people don't really think that they think about. So I think that we think about a lot of stuff in a lot of ways that on a verbal level, they're hard to recreate. And it's hard to explain what you think, how you feel about it the electricity that you get so you know i listen to people and i thought well i compared my body to something i was more familiar with it was a car and kept it simple i'm not talking about i can tear down a machine and rebuild i'm just saying i know the functions of an automobile and i try to use that logic on my physical body so what you 
put in your vehicle will dictate how well the machine operates, which took me to Mary's logic, you know, what you eat is what you are. And all these little things, we're all kind of, we make jokes about them, and we, vegans, and you got your carnivores, and you got, but I believe there's a balance to life, and balance doesn't mean what balances me may not balance you perfectly. You might need to uh, make a little adjustment like a beetle or a, who was it? Uh, Anti. Anti was saying he's getting a, a little bit of a cold. He's not feeling good. I went right to vitamin C. I didn't mention oranges and orange juice. But natural vitamin C as well as capsules, uh, you know, the... Uh, I don't think it's a synthetic. You can get an organic, so you're not getting some kind of second-rate garbage. And if you do these little things for your body, so what I mean, if, if your car wasn't running right, you would more than likely think, hey, maybe I got me some bad gas. That would be the first instinct I would have ever had was, huh, maybe I, you know, I got some shitty gas. I would burn it all out and try something different. Now, if I still had the same problem I had in the first place, then I knew it wasn't the gas. Then it started to get complicated. Maybe you got dirt in the carburetor or something where you need a mechanic to fix what's wrong. Well, just like a car, we're taught that there's these magic guys called doctors that you go see them. And they've got these tools and they listen to your body, how it's running with their little you know, headphone set, and they put it on your body, and they can hear you. Wow. So, well, if one size does not fit all, there's your first thing. Now, the second thing is what Mary found out about the statin drugs is, uh, wow, we don't need this shit. These things were created to make a company money, and they sell it to us using lies and crap. And what the sad part is, is before they start this process, they go into the courts and they make laws that make it so if something goes wrong on the user's end, they can't sue the company that did it. You have you're, And now we're, we're being expected to go with Big Pharma's crap with a forced inoculation in some places. And there's no recourse. If anything goes wrong, it's on you, but... You can't not do this because we wrote a law that says you have to do it. Hmm. So, see that that mentality right there, that for the good of everybody nonsense, at that level of uh, word and deed, usually is wrong. I think that people in big groups, the bigger the group, the further away we get from understanding what's in front of us you know the more choices you have the harder it is to make a choice and then they got the so what they've done is they've uh, i guess they've controlled the illusion of choice to political parties or religions go to this school and you're gonna get now here's the part i don't understand is you're gonna get a better education from this school than you are from that school but yet, both schools offer the same exact thing, an education. But because one is more expensive than the other school, their education is better. How, how does that manage to work? Well, I figured it out. And it's layers of this shit. It's not just the education, but it's, it's connected to the religious and the government, the way these people operate. What they've done over the course of our histories, so to speak, is they've just kept the wealth within certain groups of families all over the planet. If you're not born into certain families, that's it. You're done. You're going to have your little life, like me. I've got my little life, and that, that's it. I'm not going to get a, a Learjet and fly around and meet Bill Clinton and party with Hill Dog. None of that shit's ever going to happen with me. But <laughs> there's a lot of people that are convinced in this life, right, today, that if you get out there and you work hard and you be somebody, that someday you too can go to the White House and hang out with Donald Trump. And 
I think what happens is every once in a while a renegade gets through the blockades and gets into the money. But most of the time, we're we're being lied to, like Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg is a uh, Rockefeller. He's not no stranger. To, he's a limousine baby with a freaking game to play with us. Probably is no such person as Mark Zuckerberg. I I just don't see the reality to this life that we we get shown, Twitter and Facebook and, but I believe there's reallibertymedia.com, you know, and I know that even though Grimnir is a, an alias, you know, a name for this computer life, I know there's truly a Grimnir, you know, even though that's not his legal schmiegel bullshit name, but <laughs> I trust Grim, so figure that one out. Or Rob Works, you know, I trust people to be what they present themselves to be. That's, I guess I've never explained it in that, that kind of detail that get it cleared up for once and all that's what i've been trying to tell people is if you present yourself my indoctrination and my learning abilities whatever however i judge shit is going to put you in a little box there you are and in that box you will reside and there you are and it's all mental and it doesn't have fucking anything to do with physical reality it's all in my mind so I can do whatever I want to do in my mind. It's my mind. Blah, 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 blah. So where do you... Uh, who do you take seriously in a negative? Who do you take seriously in a positive? You know, how do we come to these decisions <laughs> based on some type on a screen <laughs> that you're reading? You know, like a book, like a, a Bible, or a math book, or an English book, or a history book. It's like any other book. We're, we're just creating our own book. And we create our own book for people to read and they to do what we do. They interpret it with their own personal way of looking at shit. And I agree with that. Grimner says, fuck legal. Because we got a delay on the radio and the chat. There's always a little time lapse. But I like to catch up and, and uh, see if maybe I didn't rock somebody's world and make them type something. And we got Beetle, and we got Grimner, and we got Rob. So there's a few. Hey, Donna Van Meter's in there, chitter chattering. Hey, Beetle just came back. <laughs> These chat rooms. This is uh, this is my normal now. You know, to uh, click a button, you know, and sit down and circle, make up some coffee, and we turn on the equipment and. We see our friends getting ready to end their day in, in America. And then Cirque reads her morning paper on the internet. She does her morning thing. But because of me in her life, she's got this extra American thing to deal with all the time. And boy, sometimes when I, I watch her write stuff, because I know how she talks, but... The English version of Danish thought is sometimes, uh, the translation makes me just wonder, you know, because uh, they say in less words what we say. We, we go on and on and on, and they say it in 10 words. We say it in 40. And to have somehow or another to speak in English, it's such a bastardized language you really have to work hard to make a full, complete sentence and not insult people with it. Somebody is going to get pissed off about your opinion in this life now. We're, we're that sensitive. I'm that sensitive. Well, I really get rocked when uh, people bash large groups like men or women. I tend to, I tend to think that we're in this life together, you know. And the reason that we're opposite, female and male, is to form a team, an alliance, if you will. You know, so that you can face the world on equal platform because there's two of you and you make a complete whole. That seems to be a lost concept in life. People don't live like that anymore. Now they marry their toasters, their brothers, their cats, you know. They're exciting. They have uh, exciting lives. They don't want to be bored like me. <laughs> and just, you know, 
live with the opposite gender. It's not exciting enough just to live with a woman. Now what you do is you live with a woman that used to be a man that's surgically been altered into a woman. That way you can go find a place to wax her balls and then sue them and get rich. <laughs> be on the internet, you know, be famous for a week. I think maybe that's all that is, is they want that celebrity of the instant internet crap. Hey, I'll, I'll sue, I'll sue these people and I'll be famous and I'll get rich and da, 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 da. And some of them do, I'm sure. Everybody's got a price. Good God. I've got a price. Just, you can't meet my price. But you can try. I don't know what anybody at this point in my life, though. I'm. I don't think anybody would uh, require my services any further. I'm finished. Now I'm on retirement mode. You know, uh, hmm. trying to enjoy the life that I'm still capable of enjoying. You know, because time's going to degrade me, <clears throat> and someday the end will come. <laughs> and Cirque's job in life with me so far as she's just uh the positive side of keeping me going i suppose you know and she doesn't nag me about uh doing any of the uh the necessary things that i feel i do like the turmeric and that's on me she just told tells me stuff once and then, then that's it it's over then it's like the hmm I guess we just have our daily thing, but uh, being uh, hmm, being over reminded or bullied or told too much tends to make me kind of angry. So I figure if you tell me once and I don't do it, it's because you told me and I didn't want to do it. And my wife knows me, so she's got that down. Other folks in my past were more interested in me being uh capable or physically doing what they wanted me to do very little about me and the life i got in denmark there's a there's an equal part of selfishness <clears throat> and it came like sunday night wow i'm still blown away that the women in the family purposely got together and decided and this is why me and dennis had never done this before is cuz usually we just stay home and smoke some hash and just hang out with the women and this particular night they they wanted me and him to go out and you know get to know each other a little bit better it's but we've been friend friendly for five years so now it was time for us to actually go out in public and uh prove to the world that we could survive it without killing each other and we did <laughs> but boy did i get wrecked my god i haven't been that wrecked in so so many years can't remember the last time i think it was in tennessee uh, i have a real uh, respect for alcohol so to trust dennis and circle and margaret and maria to the point of i can get blasted out of my mind and i can get taken home and i'll wake up in the morning and everything will be cool that place i've never been to before that was new because uh my drinking days in the states were chaotic and I was a lot younger. Things were a lot different. Ah, <clears throat> oh, thanks, Rob. I'm a funny guy. I don't know. Sometimes I'm funny. Uh, sometimes not. <laughs> I've listened to the show and said, well, you know, I felt that way at the time. And then sometimes things will happen and my mind will change. But I'm not always held accountable for every damn detail, you know, that comes out of me. Uh, I usually just have to be responsible for the bigger shit that I say. So I've got a charmed life. Uh, man, I'll tell you. <sighs> well, I've had a lot of people mention that to me, looking on to my life. Because uh, so many other people that live in the fashion that I do stumble so badly and end up in such nasty conditions. Uh, hmm dependent on state and dependent on the government or dependent on a job and whatever they're they're doing the thing that i do i think it creates a balance in life and that's how i live i uh, 
it's hard to explain to other folk. They they always assume it's about money. <laughs> and I, I no money. There's so much money in this life. You, you don't need your own money. If you need your own money, uh, ah, whatever, then do that. But there's a whole world of people that I've associated with over 50 odd years that don't even use it. Like uh, I went to the uh, what was that called? The Rainbow Gathering in, I think it was 1996. I come back from a trip overseas. I went to Scotland for six months and uh, came back to America, went to go see a female friend of mine, and things didn't work out so good. So I decided to go off to the uh, west. I was in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I just decided, I'm going to go south, and then I'm going to head west. <clears throat> and I ended up in Taos, New Mexico, just following the road. This is where people were going that I just would get the ride with them and go to the end of the where they were going, and that, yeah, this is good for me. And the end of the road that I got to was Taos. And the way I got there was the last ride, the guy says, uh, I'm going to Taos. I'm going up to the Rainbow Gathering. You want to go? Sure. And uh, Because wherever he was going to end up stopping the cars where I was going to get out anyway. So it didn't matter to me where I was going. And I get to this Rainbow Gathering. And it wasn't as uh, modern and up-to-date as, as the one that Moose went to a couple weeks ago. This is way back in the day when... Uh, there were no rangers wandering around. There were no cops wandering around. It was just all the rainbow people. And they had uh, ganja tents where they were cooking ganja cookies. And they had sleeping tents where if you wanted to sleep, you just go in there and find a place to lay down. It wasn't like wild sex and that shit. It was just people, you know, crashing out at the nighttime. And it was real innocent basically smoked a little bit and had some ganja cookies and hung out in the woods for a few days with a couple hundred people maybe there was there and uh and then one decided to leave that was what got me the uh, ride to albuquerque with the <laughs> with the english new mexican states trooper <laughs> it was the weirdest I, that whole period of my trip was so unique i i wonder to this day if people believe the things that I tell them happen because they they sound even strange when I tell them. You know, well, yeah, it, it does sound kind of weird, but yeah, I got there and that happened. And see, now here it is. What, 96 is 30 years ago, folks. So uh, things have changed, but the rainbow gatherings are still going on. Yeah, I went and... Uh, Oh, did you? Yeah, they had food, and they, man, people were just, it wasn't about money and status and what you're wearing or none of that horse shit. It was just about being alive, and uh, that was it, and it was very innocent. It wasn't, I, it wasn't like a city thing. It was just being comfortable and not expecting or whatever the hell we do to each other in the city. That wasn't happening. <laughs> yeah, no wild sex. No, no. I have my wild sex in the city, <laughs> not not in the country. That's where all the ticks and the bugs are at, you bonehead. You could get ill having sex in that. What that? Uh, what's that stuff called? Poison ivy? <laughs> oh God! I just imagine because I'm I'm a city boy, so. I I just don't go for that outdoor that act, outdoor activity in the the, all the insects and the no and then whatever they're spraying in the skies and uh we're we're breathing in all this crap all the time it's changing us you know maybe it's making me more uh conservative cuz i'm conservative about some shit and then i'm liberal as fuck about it like pot i don't stop the prohibition fuck you and your business and your government leave me alone I don't even care if they make it legal. I don't just stop bugging people about they're using a plant. That's the end of that. But that's not what I get. I get society. <laughs> society wants rules. They want rules about shit that they don't even care about. All they're concerned about is controlling what we do. 
That's all it is. Make a seatbelt law because it'll save lives when... No, that's not true. Seatbelts hurt just as many people as they help. Just like any any other thing in real life is. No one size, fit, size fits all. Right, Mary? <laughs> I'm quoting Mary like a fiend tonight. But uh, I've gotten a lot out of Mary over the years. As far as knowledge, information, you know... If you want to find an answer, she'll say, this is what I would do. and Or this is what I would look at to you know, get my information from. I don't think Mary's very pushy on what I interpret things as. But we do agree a lot, so it does help the friendship. Maybe I could kidnap the old Mary girl and she'll do a dork table with me on Saturday. Because uh, she's jumped into that farming thing, so her, her time isn't as free as it used to be. You know, the more responsible you are, the less free time you have to fuck around on RLM radio. And me, I'm obviously not very responsible for time. I, I do my things that I do. Uh, huh, it's not a matter of... Uh, a quantity of time it's just a matter of doing the things I should do uh, I'm not a slave to the clock well we I will be search only got today's today tomorrow's her last day of vacation she has, she has to go to work Monday back to the slave mill back to hanging out with her sister and you know and going to work and all the things that she really likes what she does so it's really not a, it's not a problem for her to to live her life she's she's really seems very happy with with the things but she did like lazing around for three, she's been home for three weeks and i think going back to work that little bit of it that not being able to do what i do all the time is gonna rub her a little bit but She's one of those people. She's can in, like I I was when I was in her position in life. I made the best of whatever I had to do. I didn't. Oh, I got to go to work. Uh, shit, I'd wake up and go, hey man, I'm gonna go to work and I'm gonna do this today and do that. I'd make plans for my adventures. And uh, <laughs> jeez, oh man, but the mindset that you carry, jeez, it's so easy. To take control of your mindset and put it in a direction you want it to go in and not be a victim of this fucking enslavement that we're in. There's. Ha. Ah, I'm stuttering for words because it's such a unique way to see this thing, the way that I see it. Uh, I see it in a negative, too, because without it, we would do so much better, but we have it. So having it. You need to learn how to operate the machine because if you let the machine operate you, you'll always end up miserable, I think. So, how do you give anybody advice? Jesus Christ. I can only tell you what I would do. That's I think that's how I advise. When I was in that position, I did this. And this is what happened because I did that. So, listening to my... Uh, my inner self, you know, that voice that you have in your head <laughs> that talks to you, that nobody hears, that you don't even hear, but it's it's like there. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> is, is that me or is that somebody else? Well, we can play all these word games asking you know, rhetorical questions about things that in the long run really don't matter. That seem really important because other things are judged on it. Your sanity is judged on who you talk to. If you talk to yourself out loud in public places, you know what? <laughs> People can look at you and say, hey, that fellow's over there talking to himself. He might be a nut job. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Maybe that's just another form of this freaking reality that we share that we don't share because it's personal, you know. You have your own reality in the reality, so it gets complicated. And there's not a lot of resource to negotiate the answers of these things that happen. We get told stupid crap like, well, you only use 10% of your brain. Nobody's ever defined it. I've never heard anyone sit down and decipher what that fucking means. They just blanket statement, 10% of your brain, and next story. 
Okay, well, uh, let, let me negotiate this with you a second, Charlie, before I end this show. If I'm only using 10% of my brain, what's operating in the rest of me? <laughs> Is not my brain operating at all? Or how do you define all this crazy stuff we've been tricked into choosing sides on? You know, because science, whoa! Oh, I got a great end for the show tonight. Remember that love, I before E, except after C, law in grammar. We all grew up with it. I mean, it rhymes, it's so perfect, and da-da-da-da-da. But nobody ever explained the word science. Because <laughs> that breaks all the rules of what they just told me about the I before E rule. And then science in itself is supposed to be the most pure form of knowledge there truly is. Science. But they couldn't even spell it with the rules to their own freaking lion sack of shit language. So, is that one more time that we're chanting something on a frequency that's not good for us? Because <laughs> they said it breaks all the rules of the grammar, but this is the foundation of life. <laughs> I don't know what some people love, Rob, but uh, I I jumped around like a bonehead tonight, just chitter-chattering about nothing in particular uh, and everything. So, hmm. but it's been an interesting life to this point, <clears throat> and I've yet to get bored. I do, I get bored by a, a few small ideas. Uh, Repetitious verbal attacks bore me, and uh, what else? Stupidity. <clears throat> Not that I'm immune to being stupid, because comedy is basically a form of stupidity. You're taking it, and you're giving it a reality when it's just funny. It's not real. So the funny part is that you've made it sound kind of possible. To me, that's what comedy is. <clears throat> so, we're going to end my tirade tonight with that. And give you the lineup. Thanks a lot, Rob Works and Frumped and Beth Z and Grim and Van Meter and Rob and I blah 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 blah. All the people that do. That do check in with me to see what kind of crazy shit I might have on my mind. And follow the radio thing along with me. Uh, what do we got? Thursday night. So tomorrow is Friday. <clears throat> and we never know. We might have us a Vinnie Pondered Gander. We may not. If we do, it'll be at. I think noon at noon it was at one o'clock on the East Coast on Friday, so if he does radio. He's obviously not around tonight to harass or participate with me tonight. And then uh eleven at that see. Then at seven o'clock, and it's Wednesday and Friday, you got Graham Z on the Rocket Chair podcast. Seven o'clock on the East Coast. Friday night at eleven, Grimner Moose Girl, Freakers Ball. Unless Moose Girls doing music or something, going to, out doing something in, in real life. And then Grimm will do uh, Balls to the Wall. Saturday, I come back at noon with a dork table. I'm really hoping Mary's got some time. I want to do a dork table with Mary and have fun. Do some clowning around and not be too awful serious. And then Sunday, we're going to do some uh, blues in the morning. And then some trivia. And then at 3 o'clock on the West Coast, we got Hal Anthony comes out from behind the woodshed and does from behind the woodshed. Monday night, 7, and that's at 3 o'clock on the West Coast. Because that's Hal's out on the West Coast. And does a Sunday afternoon show for you guys. Then Monday night, 7 o'clock. On the East Coast, you got Grimner does Grim Leftovers. That's the shit he didn't get to when he was doing the Freaker's Ball or Balls to the Wall on Friday night. And then on Tuesday, I've been having fun fucking around with this uh, In a Perfect World thing, doing it all weird times, and Cirque's been home, so I figured I'd just roll with the changes. And uh, I had originally changed it to do it at a time I would be available. And the holidays with her vacation just <laughs> changed all that. So, But I'm pretty sure if she's at work on Tuesday that I will do a 
8 a.m. <laughs> Two in the morning on the west coast, on the east coast. It's 8 a.m. for me. I'll do a, in a perfect world, and then grab me back on Wednesday with a <laughs> the Rocket Chair podcast. So that, and then then I'll come back next Thursday night and give this shit one more chance. Because uh, I didn't have any links in mind. I didn't really know what to do with the show tonight. So I just felt like, I don't know, chitter-chattering and reminiscing and advising. But uh, Or maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just explaining the way I see this thing. And sometimes it might come out like I'm saying, hey, you should do this. Mm, I don't know what other sh- people should do. I only know what I think I've done. And uh, sometimes... Hal is 3 p.m. Eastern. Okay, noon Pacific. Thanks, Grim. I'm so bad with times. I thought I said, okay, that's where I got fucked up. Noon Pacific. Hmm. I thought it was 3 p.m. on the Pacific Zone. See, I listen to Vinny without reading. That's <laughs> my own fault. So anyway, we'll straight, we've will we straightened that out. But uh, I like Hal Anthony, so there you go. I'm glad I got a chance to fix what I fucked up. And with that, we'll give you guys a thanks a lot and an over and out.